welcome to Williams, Arizona. We are here for a very special Phoenix Finds episode where we'll be highlighting some amazing local businesses here in this beautiful Northern Arizona town. Williams is known for their proximity to Route 66 and their historic old time feel. With so many amazing things to do like eat, shop, shoot, and enjoy the scenery, it's no wonder locals and tourists make Williams a go-to stop here in Arizona. Today, we're getting a real Williams welcome by stopping by some of the most popular spots in town, starting with Cruiser's Cafe. So we're out here at Cruiser's Cafe, right here on Route 66. And I'm sitting here with the owner, John Peasley. John, Thank you, first of all, for having us out here. Oh, thanks for having me, Lexi. So this is such a cool space. I mean, you guys have really taken the whole Route 66 to heart, really brought all of the theme, like here into the diner, into your food. But before we get into all that, tell me a little bit about your background and why you wanted to start Cruiser's Cafe. I got pretty lucky. I, I can't take all the credit for this spot, but when I got out of the military in 2006, mm -hmm. I showed up to Williams and, and got lucky enough this place was here and had a for sale sign on it. Became friends with the owner and uh -huh. he carried this place uh, zero down, owner carry. So I'm a 21 year old guy that walked into this awesome 1930s filling station. That was a Love cafe. It. So cool. Yeah, and you've really kept that history of it. Like you can definitely feel those vibes here that it has that, that really throwback, really cool feeling. I mean, was that something that you would always wanted to do? Was own a cafe? It wasn't. And I've never worked in a restaurant prior to that. I worked here for free for six months and tried to learn everything that was <laughs> available. It. Um, but the coolest parts about this spot are it is on the original section of Route 66. It is the longest strip. It was the last section bypassed by I-40. The gas pumps that sat up in front of this place or inside this building today were sitting on top of the basin lift underneath this bar right here is where cars would come through this garage door and get serviced. No way. So it's pretty neat. That's amazing. No, I love it. I mean, you guys, this whole space in here is just so perfect for Route 66. I absolutely love everything, all the vibes. I mean, you have the beer on tap, the Grand Canyon beer. It's just the food spread that we have in front of us. I mean, truly, this is a feast for the eyes and for the senses. So walk me through some of this food that you guys have here. Well, I hope you guys came hungry today, right? We did, trust so me. <laughs> our team in the back put together, Felipe and Omar today put together for us. Uh, we have our nachos. So these are everyday cut fresh potatoes, oh uh, laced with barbecue, cheese, onions, um, jalapenos. We can cruise over to right outside here. You can see the smoker, but we do it all in-house, 24 hours on our brisket. We got pulled pork, ribs, and beef ribs. And that is the smell that you get as soon as you walk in, you guys, because they are barbecuing right out front. As soon as you walk up, you're like, whoa, what is that amazing smell? Yeah, that's definitely like the go-to for all sure. All our mesquite comes up from uh, Tucson. We, we buy it in huge truckloads and nice. smoke on, on wood outside here every morning. Amazing. Uh, we have Angus beef burger topped with bacon. And Classic. of course, we cut our own French fries here, so those are phenomenal. And for those that want something a little more green, we have lettuce. Um, <laughs> we enjoy the meat eater like everybody else, though. Also known as salads, we, but lettuce, yes, that's also here. And then jalapeno poppers over here. And those are topped with uh, agave nectar, so basically a, agave syrup, and it is very good. I love it. Okay, and we have some beers here. Of course, got to get that Grand Canyon Brewery in. Hey, Grand Canyon Brewery and Distillery. Uh, Came here after we basically opened Cruisers in 2006, started it late of 06, but on tap right now you have a prickly pear wheat and we also have our Pilsner on tap. Love it. Okay, so what's your like favorite go-to of what we have here? Would it be the barbecue? I would probably start with the nachos okay. and then I would work my way into the barbecue for sure. Okay, so should I try the nachos You to should, start? I would get on it. All right, I'm excited you guys. This probably will not be um, very ladylike because, oh, I, I, got, a, I got a really good piece. That's, so let's that's try cheating. That. Super crunchy, mm. super crunchy, super barbecuey, really good, really fresh. I don't know, are you gonna have some? Negative Ghost Rider. Oh man, <laughs> all right. We gotta go in on this barbecue then. So tell me a little bit about this barbecue, all the, all the different meats on here. So you have pulled pork, we have our Love brisket, it. which is sliced here. And then of course we have our pork. You'll have your pork ribs and your beef ribs. So beef ribs are gonna get your giant Flintstone looking, they're phenomenal. Mm -hmm. And then we have our smoked uh, andouille sausage. Those are a little spicy, but phenomenal. And you can't beat the Sara Lee uh, cornbread. We tried to make our own cornbread style. It was good, but nothing beats Sara Lee. 
I agree, and it looks amazing. Well, you guys, that pulled pork is bomb. Everything on here looks amazing, smells amazing. So let's dive in and eat a little bit more before we go over to the Cruiser's gift shop and walk around there for a minute, yeah? Let's do it. All right, John, let's dive in. All right, John, so we walked over from the cafe. Now we're in the gift shop. I mean, wow, there's so much cool stuff in here. But why did you want to do a gift shop? I mean, tell me how you kind of got into this side of it. So we got to feed you some nostalgia, right? And show you Route 66 Good. in an old diner. Now oh. we're in a 1911 old building. And we thought if, if people want to take home some of that Route 66 nostalgia, some of that Grand Canyon with them, because we get foreigners from all over the world and travelers from all over the US, it, we should be able to give it to them right here. So. Absolutely. Oh yeah, that's so cool. And I mean, everything that you have in here is branded. So anybody who's coming down and they really want a little piece of that Route 66 history, man, you have got it right here. And since we're talking about Route 66, I mean, tell me a little bit about for you, some of the history that you know and why you like love this area and love the Route 66 brand just in general. It's one of the oldest, it's the mother road, right? Yeah. It connected the East Coast to the West Coast. There's a ton of history here and I feel like a lot of it's being forgotten. And we all seen the car movie and we get into this Route 66 and this town just screams cars, right? It has mm -hmm. it has the longest trip. And like I said before, it was bypassed by I-40 and we want to keep it alive. We got to keep that historic relevance there yeah. and teach people what it's about. And so that's the greatest part about being here and having some of that that history really come to life. And you know, that's so funny that you said cars because as soon as we drove in, we were all like, oh man, this is like straight out of cars. This is so cool. And yeah, that history really like really breathes through and you really feel it. And I know you were saying earlier that for you, this is something you started doing. You were working over there. You were living over here. So this is just something that you've kind of like really taken root in. It's something you really love. I'm very fortunate to be blessed to be able to come to such a small town and, and live the American dream, right? Sleeping mm -hmm. on the floor of this building and selling retail during the day and sleeping on it at night. Wow. Um, we've come a long way for sure. And I think you get to see that and enjoy that, right? And, and when you look at cruisers, when we bought it, there was 15 buckets when we'd catch rain a, until we actually got enough money to do the roof. So wow. those things are, those are the trials and tribulations we've gone through with our people. And mm -hmm. we got to build this cool historic spot and keep it here, so. So other than like obviously cruisers, all this cool stuff right here, what other things are there to do in Williams? Yeah, the best part is to push my brewery and my and cruisers, right? But Heck things yeah. I do when I bring friends up here is uh -huh. Barizona. So we have oh, 140 so acre cool. bear park, wildlife that you get to drive through, bears come to your car. We have, we have the new uh, coaster in town, right? So we have this small theme park, miniature golf, uh, the only gravity fed roller coaster in Williams, right across the streets, the Grand Canyon Railroad. Um, oh, if you want to yeah. take the train, so a couple hour train ride up to the Grand Canyon, enjoy the canyon, ride your train back, end up in Williams and, and come shop and hang out at some of your, your favorite spots here. And in town as well, uh, it was just recently purchased by the Snowball owners. We have a ski resort here in town that is getting ready to um, be built out and that's gonna be a huge hit for Williams. So. Oh man, I mean, then there is a whole list of things, you guys, other than cruisers, other than Grand Canyon Brewery, definitely gotta come out, check out that railroad, go skiing. Man, there's so much great stuff out here, I love it. All right, John, well, I got all my souvenirs. I'm good to go from my Williams trip, but I still have some more time today. What else should I do? I think you need to head next door and go shoot some machine guns at Gunfighter Canyon. Okay, I'm ready, let's do it. Let's do it. All right, let's go. All righty, we have come over down the street just a few steps from Cruisers. Now we are here at Gunfighter Canyon and I'm standing here with the owner, Nishan Campbell. Nishan, thank you so much for having us in today. Lexi, it's great to have you. Yeah, yeah, so I honestly walked in and was kind of blown away by how beautiful your facility is. I mean, that intro area when you walk in, the little outside lobby area is really cool. It's all just beautiful. I thank really you. love it. So congratulations on such a gorgeous space. Absolutely love it. But tell me why you wanted to open Gunfighter Canyon and just kind of your story behind it. 
Yeah, no, appreciate all the things that you said about the facility. <laughs> we do try to keep that modern flair throughout all the facilities. So yeah, yeah. When we uh, when we decided to build Gunfighter, we, our mission was our core value. Mm -hmm. Our core value is we want to give people that once in a lifetime experience that they wouldn't normally be able to have, um, especially if they're not from Arizona or yeah. United States. We want to give them the opportunity to experience the Second Amendment of the Constitution. Because mm -hmm. that's such a big thing. You guys were saying earlier when we first walked in, a lot of your customers are not from the U.S. because right. obviously we're in a very touristy destination. Yeah. So for them to come in and do something like you said, very American. I absolutely love it. So yeah, tell me a little bit more about your history and why you wanted to start here in Williams. And I know you have other locations as well. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about just your history as maybe a gun owner or a gun sure. sh shooter or you know those kind of things absolutely so um kind of our secondary mission and it ties into that is uh we employ mostly uh, military veterans um love it and myself i'm, I'm a 15 year uh, marine major and I've, I've left active duty and transitioned to the reserves so i've been in for a little while now and i noticed that a lot of my friends were leaving the military um, and they were looking for kind of that transition job mm -hmm. and what we provide here and we have three locations one in page one in flagstaff and one here in Williams, we kind of provide that seamless transition to still be with your brothers and sisters, but we're teaching you some new skills, like how to sell, how yes. to talk to customers who don't speak English, um, how to do inventory, how to do things that, like life skills that we want people to take, take away from them when they're not a gunfighter working for us. Absolutely, well, thank you for your service first and foremost. But yeah, that's so vital for someone coming out of the military, you're ready to get back into civilian life as they yeah. call it. And yeah, those are super vital skills, I love that. And you're providing such a cool experience for people who come. So for someone that this is their first time coming to Gunfighter Canyon, what are they gonna experience? Kind of walk me through, as someone that this is my first time, yeah. walk me through that first time experience. So you're gonna come to the front doors, you're gonna be greeted by a very energetic gunfighter that can't wait to show you um, all the experiences that we have. So um, we'll pull out an iPad and we'll say, hey, this is what we have on our menu today. And we'll have um, our best selling package right now is what we call the gunfighter package. It's three very different guns. Mm -hmm. um, you get to shoot a Glock 17, which is a semi-automatic handgun from Austria. Ooh. And then you get to shoot a um, fully automatic MP5 submachine gun, and that's from Germany. Okay. And then we'll finish it up with a Remington pump action shotgun, tactical shotgun, which is made here in America. So we kind of give you a taste of all the worlds with three very different guns, never shot before. It's really a cool, cool experience. And most people take these targets that you see behind us <laughs> home. Um, we get dozens and dozens of photos every week on our, on our social media of folks putting them in frames and going, look what I did, I shot a gun wow. um, in America or, or Arizona, you know, mm -hmm. here in Williams. So. Holding them up next to you and yep. taking a picture with the, with the target, that's really, really cool. And yeah, I love that you have multiple different guns for people to have the different experience. So what about for somebody like me that maybe has a little bit of nerve? I love it. No, you're <laughs> our favorite customer because that's where we're gonna, we're gonna show you, we're gonna go from point A to Z very, very quickly in a really safe manner. Okay. So we'll start with the semi automatic pistol, we'll get our stance right, get our grip right, we'll go through safety, some safety rules, mm -hmm. um, and then we'll kind of work our way up to some more fun guns, stuff that um, even the, the modern citizen here in the United States can't really own. We have special licenses, which allows us um, to have fully automatic machine guns, to build our own machine guns, gotcha. um, and that's what allows us to do that. So cool. um, yeah, so we'll pick some guns, we'll go from the iPad, we'll fill out some waivers, kind of make sure everyone's got their phones and, and cameras ready to go, we'll <laughs> walk them in the range, do a quick safety brief, um, and then we'll kind of start from there. I love it. Okay, well, we're gonna shoot some guns today, but before we get into that, give me like a tip, like a basic tip yeah. right now for stance. What's something that somebody who's watching at yeah. home, they've never shot a gun, what's something they can learn right now, like this, like holding a gun or a it. stance, something that, that you can teach me here right, right now. So the biggest the biggest problem most first time shooters have, mm -hmm. especially when they're shooting a pistol, is they like to get away from the gun. So when they push their hands out like this, mm -hmm. they start to kind of creep this way. and they Lean back, 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 back a little back, bit. Back, <laughs> they're trying to get away from the gun and they don't sure. know they're doing it. Mm -hmm. So we always like to say is you want to counterbalance the pistol that's in front of you. Okay. And you can do this with a rifle, a shotgun, anything. We like to say, hey, be proud of your butt. Put <laughs> it back. Put your butt back and be butt proud back. of it. You're gonna stick it back and you're actually gonna get over on top of the gun. Okay. So that's what they want to do is say, hey, stick your butt back. And if you stick your butt back, generally, we're gonna get you into a much better shooting position than if you're all the way back here struggling with the recoil of the gun. Gotcha. So we're gonna do that in the shooting stall here in a minute. All right. Um, but that would be my one tip that I'd say, hey, we can we can fix a lot of problems just with that. I love that, that's a really, really good tip for guns and for life. Don't be afraid to be proud of your butt. I like that tip. <laughs> <laughs> Jean, thank you so much for yeah. that. Let's shoot some guns. Let's go shooting. All right. So 
it is that time of day. It is the happiest time of day. That's why we are here at Grand Canyon Brewing and Distillery because it's time for a beer, I think. I'm standing here with Austin. He is the head brewer. Austin, thank you so much for chatting with us. For sure. So I love what you guys do here because you were telling me a little bit earlier, it's all from here, made here, canned here, bottled here, all of the above. Yep, grain to glass is what we like to call it. So we get all of our raw materials and whether it be distillery or brewery, we take it from grain all the way to your glass. We do all the processes. We can it, carbonate it, filter it, everything. I so, love it. Awesome. You see it from the very beginning all the way to right here in your bar, people yep. having a glass, drinking it and enjoying it. I yep. absolutely love it. So you have some really cool stuff coming out right now. It's kind of seasonal stuff. Tell me about uh, what you guys got right now. So at the moment, our most recent seasonal is Pumpkin Springs Porter. Yum. Um, it is a delicious pumpkin spice porter. Uh, other than that, we have a fan favorite and one of our favorites is Prickly Pear Wheat. Ooh. It is um, not necessarily seasonal, but it stays out all the time. And then we have Prickly Pear IPA, which is a new one for us. It's a Safeway exclusive. Ooh. And so that's our newest dive into local fruit of prickly pear. That's really cool. And so you're head brewer. Yes. So with something like the pr prickly pear, mm -hmm. how much input do you get with the different flavors? Like, were you like, we've got to do a prickly pear IPA? So it's a team effort. We all come up with ideas. And uh, prickly pear was mentioned early on. So that's where the prickly pear wheat started. And then we're like, what else can we do with prickly pear? So an IPA came to mind. Everybody loves IPAs. We took a few tries of it at our Flagstaff location and then brought it here. And now we've got a product that's going out to Safeway exclusively. And I think everybody's gonna love it. I can't wait. I mean, I am a huge IPA fan. I love an IPA. And then that prickly pear, I'm sure gives it just a little bit of that extra something special. Earthiness, you know, some berry flavors. Ooh. It's delicious. And then it's a locally sourced ingredient. So to bring something from Arizona into our Arizona beer is the best of all the worlds, right? Absolutely. For yeah, sure. I love that. I love that. And so tell me for you guys as a brewery, as a distillery, what's next? What's coming up for you guys? So we're working on a lot of expansion right now. We're working on getting the distillery in its own building. We're adding uh, brewing vessels so we can basically uh, multiply the amount of beer we bring out each month. Uh, we're adding extra warehouse space and extra cooler space. So they're always expanding here. Nice. And we're trying to get more product out into the state. I love it. Yeah. I love it. So a lot of big stuff coming up for you guys. Oh yeah, always busy. Really exciting stuff. I love it. Congratulations on all that. Lastly, before we go inside and actually try some beer, what's your favorite? Ooh, I'd have to say my favorite right now is probably the Prickly Pear IPA. Okay. Uh, because it's new and it's exciting. Um, after that, I'd have to go with Hop Canyon because I'm an IPA fan as well. Yeah. So. Very cool. Okay, well, I gotta go try that Prickly Pear IPA then. Definitely. All right, let's do it. Awesome. <laughs> Room, and I'm sitting here with the head of marketing and sales, Alexander Phillips. Thanks so much for chatting with me. No, thanks for coming in. It's Absolutely. Been... I mean, so you are the man in the know. I mean, we were just oh. over in the production area, <laughs> yeah. talked a lot about beer, but you guys are a distillery as well. Like I have this gorgeous cocktail sitting in front of me. So go into a little bit more about kind of the distillery, your spirits, kind of tell me a little bit more about that. Like when someone comes in and they want to get one of these beautiful cocktails. Absolutely. So uh, we started as a brewery, mm -hmm. uh, but we evolved. Uh, we're a beverage company first and foremost. Yes. So we kind of evolved into 
having the still side aspect as well. Late 2017, we kind of joined the full market after about six months of distilling and kind of experimenting a little bit. Okay. Uh, also, the excise tax law had passed, so that was helpful <laughs> sure. uh, to launch in January 1st, specifically of 2018. Cool. And um, it's, it's been quite the ride ever since. Uh, the cocktail in front of you is called Apple of My Eye. It's actually made with one of our seasonal products, uh, Apple Pie Moonshine. Delicious. Absolutely. It, um, it, it's in that like kind of like fireball wheelhouse where it's like very sweet and very much a holiday mold spirit, right? Absolutely. And uh, it's one of our nine seasonal spirits. We have 18 overall products in the, in the distillery, um, nine of them being year round, nine of them being seasonal uh, cool. to kind of give, it, it's a huge portfolio for quite a young distillery, but we're, we're very adamant about it. A large por portion of it, a third of it is actually our RTDs. That's okay. like ready to drink like nice. beverages. Uh, so it's, it's kind of seltzer and canned cocktails are all kind of coming into Perfect. the market. We're a distillery already. So we decided to make some canned cocktails. Might as well. I mean, that's so popular right now. So having something like that, it's easy to access. You can grab it, you can drink it. Absolutely. So it really also works for those people who are beer drinkers, which is your guys' brand. For sure. So it really goes hand in hand. And something else that beer drinkers and alcohol <laughs> drinkers in general love is food. And this food in front of us right now looks absolutely incredible. So walk me through what we have here on the table. Okay. So, I mean, I guess I'll start with the... Uh, most obvious, these are wings. Uh, we serve them naked with a variety of sauces that we make. All of our kitchens are scratch made, so uh, house made sauces, and then you kind of get to pick your perusal. If you want them tossed, we'll do that obviously, cool. but we get a lot of different people from a lot of different places in a tourist hub, so we like to keep it open. Yeah, and I see there's obviously buffalo on here. What is this red one, is that? So it's barbecue. We, barbecue, uh, we have nice. a, We have some really great barbecue that we do in-house. In Delicious. And then obviously traditional ranch uh, kind of covers the board. Cool. Uh, this is our charcuterie uh, chef's board uh, okay. with a variety of carbs, cheeses, fruits, and meats, which I, you know, I guess it's just the ingredients of a charcuterie board. And what's cool, I don't know <laughs> if you guys can see this, but it is literally served inside of a pretzel. Like it's on a board, like a charcuterie board, but then all of the meats and cheeses and olives and all that are inside a pretzel. So this is like absolutely perfect for somebody who's coming to get that beer. They want that real Bavarian experience. Man, we got it right here. That looks amazing. Certainly, it's a big pretzel. <laughs> I love it, I love it. And then lastly, we got this guy. So uh, that's our pepperoni uh, loaf. It's uh, it's just our cheesy bread, pepperoni, two dipping sauces, marinara, and the, the beer cheese. It's, um, I'm preference to the garlic version of this, but both are just uh, a decadent carb treat, right? Delicious. Like if, 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 you're, if you're gonna dive in and you don't wanna fully commit to like the toppings of a pizza, these are both great options for that as well. And I mean, man, I think this is the predominant smell that I'm getting right now, <laughs> and it smells amazing. Yeah. So yeah, so these are some great kind of go-to like bar snacks, but do you guys do more substantial things? I mean, do you guys have things like salads or anything a little more substantial if someone wants to come in for a meal meal? Yeah, now uh, we're in the north, so that's traditionally um, gonna be a lot of like gaming and hunting, and but yeah. there's also a lot of gardening and foraging, right? Yeah. So. Uh, we try to keep a selection of salads and uh, veggie options. Uh, we, we do try to mix it up here a lot. Uh, we do a sushi night uh, once a week, which That's is- That's awesome. It's, it's wild. Uh, I'll probably be wrong here, but it, I think it's Tuesdays. Okay. Chef Edith does an incredible job. Um, and, and we really, you know, Williams is a little remote and we get a lot of tourists. Mm -hmm. And so for both that group and the locals, mm -hmm. we like to like have options and mix it up yeah. for things that traditionally are not in some remote mountain town. That's cool. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a fantastic thing. Like, you know, if you're traveling up from the city, we still have a lot of those accoutrements, but we also have something to like be experimental and adventurous with, yeah, right? Yeah, I love it. And so you guys aren't just here in Williams though, right? I mean, there's multiple locations. That's correct. We have our first satellite, which is in Flagstaff. Okay. Uh, our sister town, our founder got his master's degree in hotel restaurant management out of Flagstaff. Cool. So it was kind of like coming home for us. We opened nice. up in the old Buster's location, uh, which is like an old Flagstaff staple that ended up closing down pre-quarantine. And then mm. it's right across from Target, right next to NAU. Uh, really great kind of location if you're first coming into town. Mm -hmm. Want to stop off, grab a brewery before you head downtown and get real serious. <laughs> 
Uh, and then in Page, Arizona, which is one of my favorite places in the world, uh, and definitely Arizona, um, Page is quite a place. It's a hike to get to if you live, you know, below the center median of the state. Sure. But we built an enormous, gorgeous destination brewery up there. Nice. It is, I wish I could get there more. It is really cool. Too much for words. It is, it's enormous, it's beautiful. And Page itself has so much to offer. Uh, so much for natural tourism and just so much for the community itself nice. and we love to just be a part of that and and kind of integrate ourselves but um, that's awesome the the thing I think that unites those three locations more than anything is that while we share a lot of the same beers and foods is every place has got a, a food item or a drink that we produce on site that is unique so if you are traveling to Flagstaff and you're saying like I've been to Williams before we have different beers we have different food that you haven't had before if you like the culture and the environment of what we're producing, so. And same here uh, in, in, in Williams or in Page, you guys have something that's kind of unique and special. And um, I we mean, strive to. The, the, the space in here is really, really cool. You definitely get a specific vibe when you come in here, like the wood and everything is kind of crafted very specifically to give you that Northern Arizona vibe. So I absolutely love this space. Someday we'll get up to Page and we'll check that out. <laughs> But for today, we're still here in Williams. We're gonna finish off with trying some of these amazing dishes. Absolutely. And I'm gonna jump in on this cocktail because brewing and distillery, so the spirits are just as bomb as your beer. So let's go Very ahead good. and dive in. Let's get in there. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> That's great. Fantastic. Oh, man. It's, it's oh, so great. good.